you enjoyed a few parts of one and some parts of the other. But when two popcorn movies are so aggressively okay, there's only enough to say about them to make one honest trailer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're being serious. Pacific Rim Uprising and Tomb Raider Double Feature. Don't get mad we double these up. You know you went to see Black Panther instead anyway. Prepare for two perfectly fine, moderately entertaining films that exist for the least exciting reasons. Time Warner's legal department acquired an established IP from Paramount, and Comcast accountants noticed one of their movies overperformed in China. Instead of, you know, someone had a new story to tell or something to say about the world or... Yeah, I know. I sound like my grandpa. I'll just be in the shed. Suit up with two leads working their butts off to make these franchises a thing as they both battle severe daddy issues and Japanese MacGuffins in two films that start with fun opening sequences, descend into by the numbers action, and end with a tease for a sequel that'll probably never come. Tell them next time we're gonna come for them. I'll take two. I'm good with one, thanks. Now that Oscar winner Guillermo del Toro, Ron Perlman, and Charlie Hunnam are gone, we're left with Pacific Finn, a reluctant mentor to the next generation. Very reluctant. Shut up. Shut up. You can't do that if you're yapping your gums. Your top lip and your bottom lip, they need to meet and become Smart. friends. What record? Shut up. When he sent secret information from a dead family member, he'll team up with an assortment of heroic Chinese people. Sending help. Transport inbound. To save the world in super impractical robot battles that are so insanely destructive, there won't be much of a world left to live in either way. How many buildings can this thing take? Now that Angelina Jolie, John Voight, and Jorah Mormont are gone, we're left with Laura Croft fit, an orphan who gets in over her head, way over her head. When she sent secret information from a dead family member, she'll team up with an assortment of heroic Chinese people. Oh, you find one, go. Want to let find her? Then save the world in a super impractical tomb that's so generic. You'll wish they left her as Laura Croft, Grubhub delivery biker. You know, anyone can read a tomb. Getting Chipotle from Midtown to the Bronx in 20 minutes or less? Now oh, that is exciting. But no two blockbusters are exactly alike. Gone is the female objectification from the first Tomb Raider, while Pacific Rim picks up the slack. Eyes front, Pentecost. And one has a villain too drab to be interesting, while the other has a villain too silly to be believed. I'm ending the world. Where Uprising would have been better if it was more grounded in reality, while Tomb Raider would have been better with a little more fun, or three big dinosaurs, or something. So the next time all the new releases are checked out of Redbox, or you accidentally leave FX on on a Sunday afternoon, you can't go wrong settling on the movie based on the video game that was trying to look like a movie, or the movie trying as hard as it possibly can to look like a video game. Either way, you're gonna have an okay time. Eh, these days, okay will do just fine. Starring Finish Him his third by-the-rules military character in six movies, Crash Bandicroft, a waste of a perfectly good Rinko, all vice, no principles, McDaddy, Woo! Master Chieflets, Tiny Stark, and Burn Gorman. That sounds like a parody name, but nope, his name is actually Burn Gorman. Pacific Twoom, Uprimmer. We're not the only ones who crossed Tomb Raider with another movie. The poster mixed it with Jurassic Park. Alan! They're alive, just like me. There is cheese in my pants. Get it out? I am your wife. I am the greatest good you are ever gonna get. Lost of Ahista, bye bay. Turn on your voice chat. <laughs>